Okay, welcome to another NeoVim video. Today, we're going to be making a floating terminal plugin. Just a nice, very simple plugin, and you can expand upon it however you like. Okay, first things first, we need to make our plugin directory. So I'm gonna call this plugin floaty.mvim. If I see the into floaty.mvim, just an empty folder. If I open it up, I'll add a Lua folder, and inside Lua folder, floaty.lua. Now, if you've used, if you've made a plugin, if you've used the plugin before, Usually you have to do require and then dot setup. Now this is the name we'll use when we do require. So require floaty. So whatever you name in this Lua file is what that will be. So if I then open this, let's make the module. So first things first, we need to do local M and that just instantiates like an empty table. And then if we return that, we've already just made it our own plugin right there. So let's make a simple test. So if I do M dot test, and I'll make it a function that does vim.notify test passed. Perfect. We'll save that. And now if we add this to our NeoVim config, so I'm using lazy, so it's very simple. So if I open my NeoVim config, I go to my Lua folder plugins. I'm just going to add one called dev here, dev.lua. And inside this, if I return, I'll swap this to this side so you can see a bit better. If I just do directory in here, because I'm going to be using a local plugin, and if I do slash projects, um, floaty.lua was it? Yep, floaty.lua. Floaty.mvim. Okay, perfect. And that should install it. So now if I quit out of NeoVim, if I reopen it, and I go to my lazy, I should be able to see if I search for floaty. There we go, floaty has been loaded. So that means that if I do in the command line here, lua and then require, and then float it like we named our file, dot test, top right there, test passed. Can you see that? Test passed, easy. So, so now we're ready to iterate on our plugin. So let's get rid of this test, we don't need that anymore. Let's make create window. So first things first, we need to create a window for our terminal to go in. So let's just do m dot uh, create window. And this can be a function just like that. So this is where you want to heavily lean on the help doc so you can find out about all these uh, little things that, that exist. So for example, we're going to be using a create window or open window, I believe, open win, nvim open win. And if we go through here, you can see all the configurations. So it'll open a split window or a flowing window if relative is specified. So obviously we want to open a floating window, so we need to specify relative as the uh, configuration there. So if we just go through this, if we do vim.api.openWindow, and then we just pass in the buffer. So I'll just put buffer for now. The next thing is enter. So this is if you want the window to be focused. So when you open the window, do you want the focus on the window or do you want to stay in your previous buffer focus, if that makes sense. So the config options, I believe it said we needed position, sorry, we need relative, right? If I look for that one, which one was that again? Yeah, relative, I'm gonna do it relative to the editor. In fact, first things first, we need to define the buffer as well, right? So if I do local buffer, and I'll do vim.api, I think it's create buffer, create buff, is it? Create buff. Listed, let's say false, scratch, we'll say true, because we don't want to persist this on the system. Okay, and that's got the um, errors to go away. So now we need to do the height. So the max height it could possibly be is the window height, right? So if I do vim.api.get height, I believe, oh, there we go, win.get height. And if I put zero in here, that's the height of the current window. So look, if you put zero, it's the height of the current window. So the current window is this window we're in here. And then similarly, if I do local width, vim.api.mvim win get width. Perfect, and we'll do the same, zero. But actually, these are the max widths, right? So let's rename that. That's gonna be the max height, and that's gonna be the max width. So we can't make we can't make a window that's bigger than the window, right? That wouldn't make sense. Okay, perfect. And now if I pass in height as max height, width as max width, and then we need to assign the column, which is basically the horizontal space it's going to take up. So let's just put max height. 
And then same for the row, which will be the vertical space. So, oops, wrong way around. Max width, vertical is max height. Okay, perfect. So now if I close out of here, and if I reopen, and if I do a colon, Lua, require, floaty, create window, just like that, we've created a window. Now, as you can see, it's flowing, but it's the height and the width that we set. So if I change this to, let's say, let's, let's extract this. So if we want to do local height, we'll do max height, and then we'll times it by, let's say, 50%. Okay, and then same for width. We'll do max width times it by 50%. So this will be roughly half. It will be half the size, right? So if I do width is width, height is height. And if I save and quit out of here, oh, number is not integral. Okay, so if this happens, we can just do math.floor and that'll make sure that it's not like a crazy decimal that I can't understand. Because remember, it's in pixels. Okay, now if you open that, there we go. We've got a tiny little window that's 50% 50, 50 of the height, 50% of the width. Perfect. Now, if you want to specify where this window goes, because ideally we want it, you know, a bit more up that way, right, in the middle of the screen. So if I we'll go back to this now, that's where the column and the row comes in. So for the column and the row, we basically need to calculate uh, the spaces that we need. So if I do max width minus the width and then divide it by two, which will get the middle. And if I do the same, the middle for the difference. Now, if we close out of here and we open back up, we should be able to now create the window and it's in the middle. Perfect. Now let's go a step further. We want to create a terminal, right? So let's create another one, which is create, not create window, create terminal. And this will be another function. And in here, we're going to call the create window function. And then once we've created the window, we're going to do vim command terminal. So the terminal command. And then that should be it. If I quit off here, we open it back up. And instead of doing create window, I say create terminal. Boom. We have a floating terminal. Now I'm not too happy with the size. Let's uh, let's fix the size. Let's say 80% uh, instead of 50%, probably look a bit nicer. Um, let's have a look. That's better. So now we have a floating terminal. We can do commands in here, as you can see. Nice and cool. Now, if we want to go a step further, because as you can see, when I open this, look, I'm in, I'm in Vim mode, right? So now we're getting around. But ideally, when you open the terminal, you want to be directly in the terminal, right? So you can start typing your commands. So to do that, we just need to do vim.command. And I think it's start insert, but like start insert mode. If we now open that and we go back, let's create the terminal. And boom, look, I'm already in here. Perfect. So, I mean, there you go. That's the plugin. Nice and simple floating terminal plugin. Very easy to implement. You can modify this however you want. You can do things like a setup function where you can pass in uh, anything you want in here. So you can change the height. And we can expand this. Like if I go in this function and I add like um, a command and I'll make it optional. So if a command or nil. So that just means you can optionally pass into terminal a command. So if I do. Um, if I pass in create terminal lazy git, it's going to open lazy git. Now I've not actually got a repo in here. Just leave out that. Boom. We have a lazy git set up. So if I now do Lua require floaty create terminal and I pass in a command like lazy git, boom. I've just got a flowing lazy git. So yeah, that's how you make a very, very simple plugin just to create a terminal. I'm very excited to see what you guys do in the comments of this. Uh, expand upon it however you want. If you're not interested in a floating terminal, you can maybe make a floating like note taking thing. So when you're in a repo, if you want to leave yourself some notes to come back to, you can save it to a local file, etc. And then when you open the window, it opens that local file. Whatever you fancy, you know, I play around with it. I'll see you in the next video.